And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. So YouTube team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of questions from y'all. But before we get into it, if I'm looking at the watch that I do not have on my wrist, then I believe it's almost that time uh, for Lamar Jackson and Ravens. It's almost that cutoff time when it comes to contract talks because Lamar Jackson let it be known like, hey, week one, that's it. That's it. Week after week one, well, going into week one, if we don't have a contract by then, hey, it ain't gonna happen. And Lamar Jackson, he has been a man of his word uh, with stuff that he says. Um, and so, I, I mean, week one is like we're going into week one now because preseason is obviously over. Uh, that time uh, between the last preseason game and the first week going into the first week of the season, that's like now. That's like now because tomorrow is going to be Monday and... Hey, that, that's when they really start preparing for those Jets and Joe Flacco, of course. But anyway, um, so and they obviously haven't come to a contract agreement yet. So it that might be it. That might be it. So we'll see unless something crazy happens over the next 24, possibly 48 hours, then that cutoff time, that, that thing may come up. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. Well, we, of course, are going to talk. Uh, Ravens, we of course are going to talk contract, but first we of course are going to talk the newest team, Keep It Clean, patrons. Uh, shout out to Kevin P, uh, shout out to B. Jones, and shout out to Tim M. Appreciate y'all being patrons. If anybody would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, again, you don't have to, but if you would like to, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Um, now, also, we got a lot of new Team Keep It Clean channel members. Now, remember, for the channel members, um, that's another way to show extra support if you choose to. You don't have to, but if you choose to. Uh, and then for every comment that you put during the live streams uh, or in the regular comment section of regular videos, there'll be like a nice little special star next to your name. It's just a little cool little thing that just shows up next to you. But the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members are Virginia T, Mike McD, Slim, Michael S, Mark 2K6, Derek B, Victoria M, and Andrew M. Appreciate all of y'all, man. I, I love y'all. Again, I, I always appreciate how um, y'all, just Team Keep It Clean as a whole, can turn something negative into a huge, huge positive. And that's a big uh, learning lesson for all of us. Like yesterday's video about the hate and stuff, I know a couple people was like, oh man, y'all need to spend time talking about this. But in reality, it wasn't even about the hate it was really about what y'all do uh and what y'all did so especially again being so positive and supportive so that was more so uh the focus of that uh but anyway to get us started you know what let's go to one of our newest team keep it clean patrons it came from my guy b jones he said what's going on man uh love what you're doing you have the good work hope you remember me the truck driver from b more much love to you and the family hey appreciate you man I, 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 no, no, no. We appreciate it. Not I. We appreciate it. Because, um, again, like I said, that, that's what it's about, man. It's about love. It's about positivity. It's about support. It's about family, man. Like, straight up. Next question uh, came from... Oh, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Next question came from Gary A., another Tinky McLean patron. He said, I hate on you because you have weird eyebrows and your ears are weird, but I watch anyway. Hey, I, don't call it weird. I'm unique. I'm unique. So whatever's going on with these eyebrows that you hating on, whatever's going on with these ears that you hating on, they are unique. So thank you, Mr. Gary. Um, next quick oh. oh, okay. Next question uh came from um oh uh Outlaw, Outlaw 88. He said, just saying thank you. Um Thank you for reading my question on your channel. Me and my co-workers who are Ravens fans have been following you for at least two seasons now. I agree with everything you said and I can't wait to hear what my friends think. Uh, my last question made me sound like I'm not a Lamar fan, which everyone will find funny, by the way. Uh, sometimes he just makes me think he doesn't want to be here, like on Twitter. 
<laughs> oh, Lord, that trolling, it must have got you then, man. Oh, uh, He said, Lamar has been underpaid for years now, just for immediately bringing us back to life. I have not forgotten. Uh, and because he's always in the news and how good he is, makes the Ravens more popular and more valuable as a franchise. Oof. <laughs> yeah, you certainly use the word right there, more valuable as a franchise. So that's, mm -hmm. He said, I can't wait to talk about the games again, contract or not. Um, so, hey, I, I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate it. It's, uh, yeah, man, Lamar, I know with Lamar, him being such a uh, polarizing figure, a polarizing topic, um, that he, there's a lot of attention that he brings, um, and anything that he does has a lot of attention on it. Um, so I know how, um, uh, how big that can be, but I, I appreciate you a lot, Outlaw. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, from a patron came from, uh, Rastashin. And again, let me know if I'm pronouncing your name the wrong way. Uh, but Rastashin said, good afternoon. Do you think, uh, the Ravens will bring in Blake Martinez for a visit? So recently cut a linebacker from the Giants. Um, and I know he used to play for the, uh, the Packers before. I think he was number 47 on the Packers. I don't though. Um, I mean, he, I think he coming off a big like leg injury. I think that's what it was. I don't. I think that um, I think one possibility that uh, a lot of us, including myself, forget about is L.J. Ford. Uh, if if the Ravens may feel like the linebacker unit is a little bit shaky, they may bring in somebody that they're more familiar with in L.J. Ford. And we of course know he uh, he got injured in the second preseason game last year, or was it the third? I think it was. I forget which one it was. But he got injured in uh, the preseason last season, um, and that ended his year. Um, but I think with them being familiar with him, familiar with his game, familiar with his body since that he's been on the team for the past, like, what, two years? I think that could be a possibility uh, if they decide they want to bring in a, uh, another linebacker. Uh, next question also came from another patron. It's from Nazarene. He said, don't get me wrong. If they give Lamar Jackson 200 mil, good. Give him 205 mil guaranteed and 275 mil total. He shouldn't step on a field without signing something. I've, I've seen that question brought, brought up a lot, um, that Lamar, he, sh he shouldn't take the field without signing a new deal. And I, uh, I mean, I couldn't be mad at that. Uh, but he did already say, like we talked about, he's a man of his word. He said he wasn't going to hold out. He said he wasn't going to hold out. I, I do think, well, I mean, I know, or I think we all know that if Lamar Jackson decided to hold out, then that would really be putting pressure on the Ravens. Because that, like, again, if he decided... Even back in OTAs, uh, mini camp, and obviously training camp. If he decided he was going to hold out, then that would have made the Ravens make some real tough decisions because they and it would have made them make have to make decisions fast. And the longer it took, the more leverage that Lamar Jackson would have had. Reason I say that is because, say for instance, he decided to hold out, and the Ravens were like, "Oh, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do?" And they were like. They, they're like, you know what? We're not going to do this. We're going to trade him. We're going to trade him. We're trading Lamar Jackson. Um, then if they did that, they would have had to have done that early. So whatever their plan, their backup plan was going to be at quarterback, they would have had to start it, inserting it like right away. Um, but on the flip side, if Lamar Jackson held out and they were like, man, we, we want Lamar Jackson here. We want him to be our guy. We got to get something done. We got to get this thing moving. We got to get this thing going. Oh, man, we come on, man. So the, the longer it took and the longer they were like, hey, we know Lamar Jackson is our guy, then, and he was holding out, they would have had to have come to a contract agreement with him. They would have had to, like, really stepped it up. And the reason I, I keep saying the Ravens would have need to step it up because there's no deal yet. There's no deal yet. And so obviously that means, especially since they have been in contract talks, if there's no deal, then that means both sides ain't happy. Both sides ain't happy with the, the way things are going. And Lamar Jackson, obviously, because he's the one that has to agree to what they offer. But they ain't offered nothing that he agrees to. Yet. So, hey. And on the Ravens side, it's like, hey, who, who, knows the, the, who knows the way that they're going? Are they like, are they slowly offering him more and more? Or are they like, hey, Lamar, this is the most that we're going to offer you. Take it or leave it. We don't know. We don't know. Um, but that has been one of the most fun things about this whole ordeal. We don't know. So we can wait, we can watch, we can think, we can speculate, but we just don't know. Uh, but anyway, he said another quick question. Why didn't Lamar debunk the source? Oh, but anyway, to the previous question. Lamar Jackson, if he would have held out, 
um, something would have got done with him one way or another. But his next question, he said, uh, why didn't Lamar debunk the source that said the Ravens offered him more guaranteed than Kyler, but debunk someone on Twitter saying that he was offered more than Watson? Um, I don't know. It, it, it could be to just put a little pressure on the Ravens to, to offer him more than Watson. Who knows? Um, because I think with the source, with, with the whole thing about him being offered more than Kyler, I think that would be obvious. Like, there would be no way that Lamar Jackson would take less than Kyler. Especially, again, the way that the, first off, the way that the, the quarterback market works, and then Lamar Jackson versus Kyler Murray, like, hello, no. There's no way that he would accept less than Kyler Murray. So I feel like that him being offered more than Kyler Murray, I feel like that that's a given. That's a given. Like, that's, I feel like that wouldn't be like a secret or anything. That wouldn't be somewhere it's like, Oh man, uh, is it really true or not? No, of, co of course he would need to be offered more than Kyler Murray. So that's why I think he wouldn't even bother debunking that. Uh, next question also came from a patron, uh, Kendrick. He said, uh, what's the word engraving over this time? Every media outlet discussing Lamar and spewing out information on their own opinion. Ooh, <laughs> they, they better not be sharing their opinion. You know, you know that's, that's frowned upon. Anyway, um, that are not facts, but they want you to believe that they are. Anyway, I feel like all this money being thrown around media outlets and some players turn media as well as some players, they let money be more a reason than love of the game. They're more focused on who makes more money and the fame. Lamar Jackson hasn't done that last year. He got paid 1.2 or so mil. This year, he's making 23 mil. And some change, like, that's a big uh, difference, especially coming from where he came from. He could only imagine seeing that type of money, so people telling him to hold out and not go into the season with a contract don't have the love of the game like Lamar. Uh, he just loves the game, and the pay is a bonus. Don't get it confused. He knows his worth, but why hold out when he could break out this season and break the bank? Just a thought. Let me know what you think. And big trust. I see what you're saying. Trust me, I do, Kendrick. But, um, wow, Lamar Jackson, he obviously loves his job. What do you sign up to work for? What do you sign up to work for? Do you, in, in your job, do you go to work, and, and especially if you love your job, you love your coworkers and stuff, you love the environment, do you go there and be like, oh man, you know what? Hey, I love my job so much. I love the environment so much. I love my coworkers so much that, you know, y'all don't gotta, y'all don't gotta pay me. Well, you, what, what you're paying, I, I don't need a raise. I don't, I don't ever need a raise. Even though I am such a significant part of this company, this company would not be doing nearly as good as it is without me. I don't need a raise. Nope. Um, I'm underpaid now. Uh, yeah, I'll keep being underpaid. And while you appreciate getting paid for what you do, but you are also deserving of a big, hefty raise. You're going to take that raise. You're going to try to get that raise. Especially, again, you're looking at your peers who are, have, have done a lot of what you haven't done or some haven't done what you have done. I know that was a little tongue twist. I kind of confused myself with that too. But... You're, you're going to want to get paid. So the thing with Lamar Jackson, again, him wanting to get paid does not mean, oh, I, he doesn't love the game. No, I, mm -mm, no, 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 no. Get your money. Get your bread. Get it. Get it. There's plenty out there for everybody. Get it. So with, with Lamar Jackson, I, yeah, I understand where he came from and everything. And that, yeah, he already done made a lot of money. But now he's getting ready to make a whole lot more. So, hey, it, the, the clock is ticking, and it's, it's time for him to take advantage of it. So, I mean, with the whole holding out, it, it wouldn't mean that he didn't love the game. But, he, again, he already said he wasn't going to hold out. But if he would have held out, it wouldn't mean he didn't love the game. It means that he is also a businessman. You can love this game all you want to. This game don't love you, though. This, this game don't love the players. man. It's a business. It is a business. That's why I never fault players for trying to get as much bread as they possibly can because the NFL is a business. And they don't love you long time like that. Yeah, you make them some money. Um, but once you're done making them money, they will chew you up and spit you out quick. And you will be replaced quick. Quick. They don't care, man. They will move on to the next latest and greatest thing. So for, that's for any player. For any player, get your bread. Because, again, I'm, with, with what I just said, I'm not saying that Lamar Jackson is just so, just so replaceable. What I'm saying is that, again, the NFL, they will move on from players. They will move on from stars. They will move on from those people because the next big thing will come up and the next big thing will come up. So they'll keep going. They'll keep going. But 
hey, if you ain't get your money, your money won't keep going. At least not from the NFL, no. So get it while you can. Next question came from another patron, my guy, uh, A.W. Juice Man. He said, ain't graven off and thinking, still scratching my head about this. Do you think if we had Terrell Suggs, C.J. Mosley, and Michael Crabtree in that oh, 2019-20 playoff game uh, in the 14-2 season, do you think C.J. would have stopped Derrick Henry and Suggs would have gotten to Tannehill? Oh, they, they all certainly would have helped, um, especially the first two you mentioned. It's funny that you uh, – Oh, well, let me keep reading, because I was about to say, it's funny he didn't mention Crabtree yet, or he mentioned Crabtree last. But anyway, uh, he said, um, and, and I, I may get burned for this, LOL, but yes, Crabtree. Let's not forget he had a big game against the Titans in 2018 when he was lined up on Malcolm Butler. Oh, I wonder if that's the game where the previous week he had all them drops, and then he came back and he had a good game. I think that might have been it, but I don't know. He said, um, Crabtree is no Bolden. No, not even close at, at all. I remember when Ravens first signed Crabtree, I was excited because I'm like, man, we got a we got a number one wide receiver with that attitude, and we need that man. And he did have it, and he was, I, one, one thing I loved about Crabtree, he was extremely supportive no matter the situation, extremely supportive no matter what. And Willie Sneed was too. John Brown, no, he wasn't like that. Um, but Michael Crabtree, you you when they showed him on the sideline and stuff, and you just saw his his body language and stuff. He was always super supportive. He came there for Joe Flacco. All right, Flacco got taken out. Lamar inserted in. Crabtree was with it, man. Willie Sneed came there for Joe Flacco. Lamar Jackson got inserted in. Willie Sneed was with it. John Brown came there for Joe Flacco. Lamar Jackson got inserted in. Ooh, alligator arms. Um, he said, uh, I trusted Crabtree much more than Miles Boykin, Seth Roberts. He had chemistry with Lamar a bit. Uh, only one who didn't, um, oh, who didn't, out of him, Sneed and John Brown was John Brown. Uh, I think it might have been missing a word right there, but it's all good. He said, so how would a team be with C.J. Mosley, Suggs, Judon, Brandon Williams, Marlon Humphrey, Juice Man, Jimmy Smith, Brandon Cart, and the offense of Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards. Well, Mark Ingram was hurt. But anyway, uh, Justice Hill, Crabtree, Hollywood, Sneed, and Miles Boykin, Seth Robinson, our three-headed monster at tight end at the time. Uh, how would, would we have fared against the Tennessee Titans? I mean, we saw... Uh, with Michael Crabtree, he, he struggled with drops, too. Um, but hopefully he would have been one of those players like Hollywood to where they have their drops in the regular season. But playoffs, they, they turn it up. Um, but it's one of those things we'll just never know. But that's a cool little patron question mashup to where we did them all in a row. But anyway, next question came from my guy Christian R. He said, good morning, Engraven. Just want to say thank you, and I appreciate everything you do for the NFL community. You ain't got to do that. I thank you all for everything that y'all do uh, for Team Keep It Clean family. Bro, he said, that's for the question. The main topic is about Lamar Jackson getting a fully guaranteed contract. Like, yes, in my opinion, he's done more than Deshaun Watson. So he deserves it. But then you look at Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. They've done more than Lamar as far as accomplishments besides MVP. Oh, yeah. Because Russell Wilson, Super Bowl. Uh... Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl, and been to two Super Bowls and like a million AFC championships. Um, Josh Allen, uh, Divisional. Was, no, was it Divisional? AFC? No, that was Divisional round. Oh, that's a crazy game, though. But I think his highest is Divisional. But anyway, um, they've done more than Lamar as far as compliments besides MVP and don't have fully guaranteed contracts. How do you see this playing out? I obviously want Lamar to get his money, but do you think Russell Wilson makes it even harder to get the fully guaranteed contract? Um, he said, thank you again, and I apologize for the length of the question. No, this that wasn't no long question at all. Russell Wilson, I don't think Russell Wilson necessarily makes it harder. Um, it all just depends on how Lamar and his people, they present him. Because Ravens could be like, hey, look, hey, Russell Wilson, he's just the, the latest quarterback to get paid. He didn't get a fully guaranteed deal. And Lamar Jackson could be like, oh, yeah, that's cool. But, um, hey, Russell Wilson is like, what, 33, 34, something like that. Uh, I'm 25, 26. So uh, when you're talking about what I've done already, especially how much y'all need me, uh, but what I've done already and what I still have yet to do, uh, and especially based off of potential. Like, again, Russell Wilson, he's going to go over there in Denver and do his thing. Um, and I think they're going to do really well um, because that's the biggest thing that they were missing, even though they're in a tough, tough division. Oh, they're in a tough division. Oof. Um, but Lamar... He, he could look and say, hey, Russell Wilson is like, uh, he's older. I'm not older. Give me my guaranteed money. 
said, hey, Russell Wilson cool and everything, but look at Deshaun Watson and what he got. He said, everybody's saying that that's an uh, outlay of a contract. LeVar going to be like, no, 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 no. I want that to be my new norm. Next question came from my boy Jarvo. He said, do you see a scenario by us not paying Lamar Jackson and keeping Tyler Huntley? Um, I certainly think that the Ravens, I, I think they will consider that. I, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they've thought about that option. Not that they're not saying that they would want to do that, that that will be their first choice. I think their first choice would be to get Lamar Jackson signed before a deal that they like. Uh, to where they come out of it feeling like, all right, we didn't necessarily lose on those contract negotiations. Because somebody, somebody going to lose, man. Somebody going to lose. Not everybody can win when it comes to contract negotiations. Somebody got to give something that they didn't want to give, and it could come from either side. Um, but I certainly think that the Ravens uh, would think about that option as like, hey, just in case. Just in case. Because, again, like we keep talking about, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he is a businessman. I mean, we see him with all the commercials, the endorsements, the sponsorships, all that. He is a businessman. But the Ravens, they also a business, too. So in business, uh, especially in negotiations, you got to consider all options. You got to consider the options like, hey, if this person in negotiations, if they end up getting over on us, all right, cool, do it. Hey, if we end up getting over on them on negotiations, oh, okay, cool. Oh, well, if we can't come to an agreement, what's going to be our other options? Next question came from my boy Melvin G. He said, what's up, team? Keep it clean. I don't think we realized something. That Lamar Jackson has the potential to be top 10 in passing and rushing. And uh, in my opinion, he... Whoa, whoa. Hey, I told y'all be careful about sharing your opinions, man. Be careful. It's, it's just frowned upon. He said, um, and, and in my opinion, he deserves to be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. The only person on the Ravens offense that makes at least 20 mil is Ronnie Stanley. Oh, he said Ronnie stay hurt Stanley. Uh, but yet this offense is consistently top 10 in the league, which is why I don't understand when people want Greg Roman to be fired. Have we already forgotten why Justin Tucker is the GOAT? It's because Joe couldn't get the ball in the end zone consistently. But what he could do is get, <laughs> get a pass interference to get us in the field goal range. Lamar deserves to make half a billion, like my boy Mark Ingram said years ago. Pay this man before you lose half the fan base. Mm. Well, um, yeah, he does have the potential to be top 10 in rushing and, and, and passing. I just, I don't know. Like, like I, I keep saying, I, 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 the fact that he's asked to be the Ravens' top passer, oh, cool, but top rusher too. It's like, come on now. Um and I just, I think it just is, it, it's based off of so much. Um, sometimes it's design runs. Sometimes it's just the, the lack of quality in, in offense. And, and, and to where he's, he's looking, waiting for something to come open, waiting for some guys to, to, <laughs> to start running next to each other. But it's, it, I don't know, man. It's just, he deserves his money um, from everything that he's done. And everything that he's going to continue to do, uh, especially um, a healthy Lamar. Because, again, last year, we didn't even have a healthy Lamar even when he was playing. He was not fully healthy at all. Mm -mm. He wasn't. Lamar Jackson looked significantly slower last year. You could just tell, man. You could tell. And it's crazy because a significantly slower Lamar Jackson still got speed. But he, st he looked significantly slower than me all last year. He really did. Um, so... Uh, hopefully this, this can be a year where, oh yeah, if he get top 10 passing, cool. But really just, I just really hope the Ravens just, they have more of a flow. Their offense has a better flow and their offense can complement both sides of it. The running and the passing, they can complement each other. Uh, the Ravens can consistently have options as far as the type of offense that they run and the, the, the different options on the offense as far as the weapons and hope people can really, um, be put in position to do well. That's the, that's the biggest thing for me this year, man. People get put in position to do well, and they get put in position to do well consistently. That can just take the team, the offense, to another level, uh, and that can also take Lamar Jackson's pockets to another level as well. Next question came from Chaz Ray. He said, uh, I think Ross should be the Mike linebacker and put Patrick Queen on the outside to use his speed, uh, sideline to sideline. I don't know if uh, you all have seen it, but I have seen how he avoids contact and makes business decisions. On certain plays. Uh, Raw showed that he is not afraid to hit the gaps. And this move will make Queen show off his talent. You know what? I, I honestly would not be mad at that. Because again, like you mentioned, Queen, Queen with that speed. That speed. And he is an excellent blitzer. Um, and Ross with his smarts. That would be a nice combination of both. 
I'm not saying Queen is stupid or anything like that. Um, but that would be a nice combination. Somebody who is a good tackler. Now, hey, I, I feel like you couldn't just throw Ross in there from jump. It would have to be like a sort of a, a gradual thing. Because, hey, while those were NFL players that Ross was going up against, all right, let, let's see how he goes up against those starter running backs. Uh, the Derrick Henrys, even though I know we don't play them this year, at least in regular season. But the Derrick Henrys, the, the, the Joe Mixons, the Kareem Hunt, the Nick Chubbs. Let's see how he goes up against those guys. But I, I, it, it would be hard to, um, hard to know when he would get an opportunity to do that. Because you have Patrick Queen, because you have Josh Bynes, because you have Malik Harrison, and depending on how uh, the roster shakes out. So um, I do see your vision, uh, but I just don't know how he would get there. What if? Next question came from my guy, 5'3 Giant. He said, I just want to start by saying I want Lamar to stay and I want to see him paid. With that said, <laughs> hey, that's, you know, that, that, that's disclaimer talk right there. I, I just want to start by saying I want, I want Lamar to stay and I want to see him paid. With that said, it looks like the franchise tag looks more and more likely by the day. What if Lamar didn't sign a tag and sat out a year? Don't think it would ever happen, but how would you feel about that? Thanks for the great content. It's very appreciated. No, I appreciate you, man. Um, I, I just I don't envision that happening. I, I don't envision him. If it, I, I could envision him sitting out with a franchise tag, but for a year, no. Mm -mm. I don't think that would happen. Something would be done before it got to that point. Something will be done. Whether he got moved or whether he came back, something will be done. If he didn't want to play on a franchise tag, then, and he really, <coughs> excuse me, made it known to the Ravens, he didn't want to play on a franchise tag, then they would either have to come to a deal with him, but if they didn't want to, they, I think they would move him. I really think they would move him. Um, this is why I just, I, I hope the franchise tag just does not even happen because it, I don't know, man. It just I, that that that's because like, I know a lot of people like they they've been panicking now about Lamar Jackson, the whole contract thing. Da da da. I wouldn't be panicking right now. Right now, like okay, cool, whatever. We'll see what happens. But if it got to that to franchise tag time, then I think that's when panic should kick in. Next question came from my guy Joel. He said Lamar is aching to two thousand seven Lebron James. Hello, Mr. Engraven. I want to commend you on building a platform that allows us Ravens fans to ask questions, interact, and provide our perspective. On our favorite team in a respectful manner. Uh, Super double you and I wish you more success. I appreciate that, Joe. That, I mean, that's what it's about, man. You like you said everything perfectly. That's exactly what it's about. Uh, he said, I believe that Mr. DaCosta and John Harbaugh have failed Lamar Jackson. After his rookie year, we understood that Lamar had immense potential. So I commend the organization for putting the ball in his hand and tailoring the offense to his abilities. Uh, my problem is once we realized he was a generational talent, we did nothing to assure ourselves a chance to win. That's it. That's it. I mean, they um I just feel like the the lack of getting those guy guys like that on offense. Not guys that just necessarily just had potential, but guys that have been reaching their potential already like that. Uh with a mix of guys with potential. It don't got to be one or the other. It can be both. Um, so potential is the, the high draft picks at wide receiver, Hollywood Brown, then eventually Rashad Bateman. OK, those are potential guys. But what about guys who have been reaching their potential already in the league? I think that would have made such a big difference. And yeah, after like two again, the rookie season is like, oh, OK, question mark still. After 2019, it's like, oh, OK, oh, we got one. We got one of them guys. Unanimous MVP. That mean it ain't no other like debate, no other decision, no other qu no questions. Hey, oh, this was that guy. Oh yeah, yeah. We we oh we got him. We we got our guy. All right, let's really try to take him to another level now. But anyway, I uh, said like LeBron in two thousand seven, who led his Cavs to the NBA championship with marginal talent around him. The team made no moves the following years in order to compete for a championship. So LeBron James left. We see what the Eagles have done for Jalen Hurts, the Bengals for Joe Burrow, the Bills, the Bucks, the Dolphins, Saints. The list goes on and on. It does. Uh, rather than capitalizing on Lamar's rookie contract, they remain conservative. I personally think that they, the Ravens, would love to win a championship, sure, but are just as content to be known as a well-run organization that is always in the mix. Oof. Joe, ooh, you, you can't be bringing it like that right now. It's too, it's too early for this, man. 
Ooh, he said, Eric DaCosta has this lore among some Ravens fans that he is some great GM. I'm personally unimpressed. He has drafted no one of consequence thus far. Uh, I could be wrong this year. For some draft guru, he sure does miss a lot. Uh, like, why would you hoard picks when you can move up and get elite talent that would make the team better in positions of need? And then we pick up a million undrafted free agents just for them not to make the team. Mm. Well, mine is Josh Ross. He made the team. But, yeah, I... Ooh. Wow, Joel is uh wow, 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 um, wow. Mm. The draft pick thing. Oh, that that one like, ooh, I I felt that one on another level. Because that's something that we've been saying too with the draft picks. It's like I right, hey, quality over quantity. That's why I never thought I was going into this draft, especially like ten draft picks. No, there's no way. And they they went and drafted eleven players. Now so far. They've been getting good stuff out of a good amount of those players. But we're going to see over the years and whatnot. But there have been a lot of misses in the draft. There have been a lot of misses. Um, and then tra trading guys, drafting some guys and cutting them the same year. Um, it's, hey, in the draft, hey, it's, you never know. It's, it's a risk. But we hope it will be a more calculated risk. And the, the, I agree wholeheartedly about the part as far as using, a, instead of having a bunch of draft picks, then putting some together and moving up for the, the yeah, like you said, the more elite talent. Oh, I'm with you all day on that one. Anyway, he did say, I respectfully disagree with you on the idea that the style of, that the style of offense cannot win a championship. Uh, the most dominant team this past two out of three years have been the San Francisco 49ers. They won. They won a Super Bowl the past two out of three years. 49ers did. Did they? Uh, did they? Did they win? Because they, I think last year, they, they beat the Packers in the playoffs. So it was great. And um, with the Cowboys, I think they they, they beat them. Um, but then, oh, hold up. Oh, no, the Rams won the Super Bowl. This year. I think a couple years ago when the Super Bowl in Miami, 49ers, they came through. Hey, they came through the championship. And they, oh, oh, no, it was the. The, the Chiefs, the Chiefs. But they hey, they did make it, though. They did make it. And they've been competing. They've been competing. But with the 49ers, um, they're, they are a run-heavy team. But they have a passing game that is, is very creative, and, and it puts their guys in positions to have success. It does that. They got a, a dominant tight end when he's healthy in George Kittle. Ravens got a dominant tight end, too. Uh, with Debo Samuel, they featured him a lot. Obviously as a receiver, but obviously running the ball too. But they, they featured him a lot. Uh, and and he, he was nice, man. But they, they find ways to put guys in position of success. Um, that's my biggest thing with the Ravens that we've just been echoing a lot. But anyway, let, let me continue. Um, he said they rely heavily on their run game and defense. Oh, yeah. For, I forgot about the defense part. Uh, with, with a below average quarterback. But they have such a talent gap uh, on most of the NFL that even a bottom half quarterback can be a drop pick away from going to two Super Bowls in three years. Our team. Oh, yeah. That, that safety. Who was the safety that dropped that pick? Because that safety he had. It, he was like, oh, yeah, it's coming. And then boop. But anyway, um, he said our team lacks high end talent. Oof. Besides the QB. And that is why we will not be able to compete for a championship. Oh, my goodness. See, Joel, why, why are you doing this, man? Why, why, why you have to break stuff down so just beautifully, man? Why you got to do that? Why you got to do that, man? <laughs> oh, gosh. This has been like, this has been one of my favorite questions uh, in a long time. And that's obviously no offense to any other question, but the way that he's just going through and explaining everything that he's thinking and he's explaining it in detail and the reason he's giving you the reasons why this and why, man. Oh, boy. Um, he said, I know I rambled uh, for forever and I do apologize. Don't apologize. Please don't apologize for that. Uh, but I'm such a huge fan of the content and, and a, a frustrated Ravens fan who knows we will barely make the playoffs this year and get knocked out in the first round with a generational Q QB, and he will get all the blame when it should be solely placed at the feet of the organization and not him. Mm. Dog, wow. Oof. I should have just made this question its own episode, man. Um, wow. As far as the, the lack in high-end talent, um... I think, oh yeah, on offense, I mean, they got Mark Andrews, and he was homegrown, so shout out to them for that one. Um, 
But yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, well, yeah. Defense, they, they be getting some guys obviously on, on, on defense. But yeah, offense. And I think you were talking more specifically to the offense, but I don't know if you just talk about the, the team as a whole. But I think you're more so talking about offense. Um, but man, I don't I see I don't think they'll barely make the playoffs. But I'm just that's I think that's most of our biggest worry. What's gonna happen in the playoffs? But as far as the high end talent, yeah. This and that that goes back to, to your your second paragraph about um yeah, after two thousand nineteen. It was like, all right, we got a generational guy. Okay, boom. It should have been like, all right, let, let, let's get it. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. Um, but, yeah, it's just more pressure put on the guys who um, aren't established yet. So we just we got to hope for the best. It's like I would rather, me, just my opinion, uh, I would rather go into whether it be the playoffs or whatever, the, or really the season. I would rather go into the season with uh again of course the potential guys but also the guys who have reached their potential already or who have continued reaching their potential whose potential has been being tapped i would love to go into the season i would have loved to go into the season with both but they're not so it's like okay we just gotta see how things shake out hope for the best hope for the best because again these, these guys are nfl players so they obviously got talent they made it there they, they in the one percent of the one percent um We'll see how stuff shakes out. Lamar's contract ordeal. Next question came from my boy, uh, uh, Abayo Me. He said, uh, Hello, Engraving. This is my first question from subscribers. Uh, keep up the good work. I believe they're, I appreciate you. He said, I believe the Ravens weighing uh, hurts them big time, as it ha has done so far. <laughs> Give Lamar a five year, 250 million guaranteed contract. Oh, yeah, that's, that's 50 per year, right? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Yeah, yeah, that's 50 mil per year. All right. If Lamar goes out, balls out this season, and wins another MVP, or better, still wins the Super Bowl like Flacco, the price starts at 300000 300000 Ooh. Uh, he said minimum or even more. What do they do then? The ridiculous thing is that all these analysts saying team owners don't want guaranteed contracts and there's pressure on the Ravens front office not to give Lamar a guaranteed contract. However, if Lamar somehow becomes a free agent, Oh, they, they, Ravens would never let that happen. They would never. But anyway, he said if Lamar becomes a free agent, other teams will line up to give Lamar the same guaranteed contract that we don't want to give him right now. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish, EDC. Mm. Yeah, that <clears throat> the free agent part, Ravens would, they would never. They would do franchise tag. They would do whatever transition tag. They They would not let Lamar just become a free agent and just walk. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, hey, again, like you mentioned, what you won't do, another team will, or what you won't pay, another team will. And I, I would love, especially if the contract talks do end up getting cut off, I would love if Lamar uh, and the Ravens, they, they really put the pressure, well, I guess Lamar, he really put the pressure on them. Like going out and winning the Super Bowl. That would be such a great problem to have. Important. Cap is cap? Hmm. Next question came from my guy, George K. He said, I was just listening to the Ravens Film Study Podcast. And, oh, is, was that by Ken McCusick? Shout out to him. That's that's my guy, man. Uh, but he say, he, anyway, he said, um, and have some info a lot of fans don't know or understand. All guaranteed money in the contract. In a contract, the owner of the franchise has to put that guarantee cash in, esc in an escrow account. For that said player. Yeah, we, we've been hearing that that escrow word a lot recently because the, the, the conversation of guaranteed money has been coming up a lot recently, especially with Lamar Jackson and Deshaun White. Anyway, but well, let's keep going. He said, on the podcast, they were saying the Haslams did the guarantees for Watson because it's a tactic they are able to do that many other franchises can't. And see, I wonder with that, and some people have brought this up before too, I wonder if that was their way of, yeah, securing their quarterback and making sure that they got Deshaun Watson. But then at the same time, these owners, they're not stupid. They know it's a game within a game. So I wonder if that was their way to try to put pressure on the Ravens because Lamar had obviously hadn't signed yet. And they was like, hey, we, we, know, we know Lamar's going to look at this contract and be like, ooh. So let's, put that, let's really put that pressure on the Ravens too. Because obviously they, they were thinking about Browns first, first and foremost, but that would be an added benefit for the Browns uh, by the Ravens suffering because of the contract that the Browns gave to Deshaun Watson. Uh, he said it, it gives them an edge. For example, the Bengals are going to have to literally take out a loan from a bank to sign Burrow. Oh, yikes. 
Now I heard something like that that like that's the reason why the, the Bengals had to change their uh sell the rights to the stadium and change the name of it. I forgot what it's called now. But I, I, I don't know all the details of that. He says some owners are legacy owners, meaning inherited from family and don't have the finances to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. As it seems there are only a few franchises that can. So even though there is a cap, there is a lot more to it and a lot of owners still have advantages and disadvantages that fans don't know or realize. This is going to affect a lot of deals in the future and have an impact on Lamar's contract. Oof. Hey, I appreciate this, man. I, I appreciate this breakdown because, yeah, I, I got to uh, myself because um, I don't fully understand the whole the escrow thing and all that. I've been hearing a lot about it, but I don't fully understand it. So this helps a little bit, too. I love the content. Hope everyone is positive today. Just wanted to show some things that are beyond what coaches, GMs, and owners are capable of. A lot more to it than just the cap. LOL. Oh, yeah. You, you a thousand percent right on that. Appreciate it, George. Next question came from my guy, Manny Will. He said, what's up? Are we tired of the Lamar Jackson questions about his contract? Uh, not really. But, I mean, it's fun to talk about. But anyway, he said, it doesn't seem that way. Oh, okay. He said, anyway, when Lamar wins the Super Bowl and the Ravens still don't want to give him his money, Lamar will leave, plain and simple. But what if they give Lamar Jackson a 260 fully guaranteed for four years? And could you be able to build around Lamar in those years? Oh, there's always a way. If there's a will, there's a way. If you want to build around a quarterback, even with giving him a lot of money, you, you will find a way. But 260 let me see what the, let me see that man that ain't 60 per year is it 260 divided by four oh 65 wow wow i think that would be, <laughs> be a no-brainer that would be a no-brainer four year 265 you get 65 mil per yeah that would be a no-brainer i i will go sign a contract for lamar and to take us out uh this episode of questions from from y'all came from my boy flirt nowinski uh, he said, per usual, hope all is well with you and yours. Oh, you already know, man. Uh, he said, hey, that baby shower fia fiasco on IG was funny. Who knows what Team Keep It Clean could be manifesting something? No, they cannot. No, sir. Uh, he said, but anyway, I was watching your last question from subscribers. Uh, and somebody talked about losing the draft picks that have been drafted, which was an insane point. Hey, and my guy uh, Joel brought it up in this episode, too. So look at it. Uh, he said, but have you ever thought about it from the other side, which is our worst nightmare? Uh-oh. What are, what are we talking about? All right, let, let's sit down for this one, even though we already sitting. Um, theory. Lamar said he's going to bring us a ring. He did. When he got drafted, talking to Dion, he said, hey, y'all going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Believe that. All right. He does it this year without his contract because EDC and them want to twiddle their fingers. Uh, now, instead of three, he's demanding four. And I know a lot of people think this is ridiculous, but it's really not. He's the most winning QB since coming into the NFL. Least injured, won an MVP, debunked any false narrative that they set for him, and then wins and then wins a ring. Definitely four. That's the floor. But anyway, oh, you talking about four hundred? You talking about four hundred mil in a contract? Okay, oh, you talking? He said that prices him out of Baltimore. He came true to his word, but goes elsewhere. When they said something about losing picks, this made me think: What would happen if we lose Lamar Jackson? We lose two prob probably guards because of Lamar's ability to be Superman. I know we only have one right now, but just manifesting, LOL, even though he wasn't a Pro Bowl guard before Lamar anyway. Oof. We lose wide receiver production because the loss of the line. Mark Andrews is still elite because he's the closest person to the quarterback. Our running game takes a hit because of that dimension Lamar brings to the running game. Uh, these are small things, but this is literally our whole offense now. Snoop is our boy, and I love Snoop, but here is the nail in the coffin. Now, Snoop didn't win any games, but Snoop, uh, also stood tall with a practice team All season, barely losing His contract is here too You know how many people will throw money at Snoop? So he's gone too Not unless the Ravens want to give their backup QB A hundred mil, lol Now see, I think if it came down to that If they end up losing Lamar Whether it be through free agency Even though it wouldn't be through free agency um, Like if they did a, a franchise tag and trade I don't think <laughs> I don't think they would let Snoop go too it, it it would be uh it, it would not be like both that that well I mean somebody throw the right draft pick in Raven face you never know but no nah, I, I don't think they will let Snoop go too uh if they let Lamar go I feel like the Ravens would uh they would give him a, a deal um hmm. mm, I just I don't want it to get to that. Um, but anyway, he said, so that leaves us at a stalemate. Lamar literally has the Ravens by their throat, and I hate to see it, but I love it. Uh, I love him and his story. Pay that man. 
Side note, um, this year on Madden, uh, Christian McCaffrey is rated higher than Derrick Henry, and it's it's, it's it's an uproar. But they always say he does more than just run. Well, Christian McCaffrey, man, he yeah, he does do more than just run. He runs, he's a little receiver, but he's always hurt. He's always hurt, man. But anyway, um, he said, yeah, and Lamar makes the O-line better, runs 4,000 yards a season, is a top 10 in major passing categories. So with that logic in mind, why isn't Lamar Jackson a 99 in Madden? Why do people consistently want him to take less money? Mm. I, I love how you put that about how he does a lot for the team and makes a lot around him better. And yeah, people want him to take a discount. Yeah, that's crazy, right? He said, also, did you notice how they signed so many running backs? And Gus was questionable for week one before preseason. I think it's something we don't know. I know this is another theory, but they put Gus on the pup before Ajabo, and we all knew Ajabo was going on pup, even the IR night we drafted him. That's kind of alarming to me. What you think? Um, Not necessarily, because I know they were trying to do something different with uh, Ajabo. They were trying to put him on um, the NFI list uh, to where it's non-football injury. They were trying to do that, but with the timing of him signing, finally signing his deal, they didn't have time to put him on it. Um, so now, now he is on injury reserve though. <clears throat> anyway, he said, uh, last but not least, I take pride in my dad's side of the family. That Phillips name is crazy. They cut one of my cousins and brought another one in. Uh, it baffles me why they let Phillips go. Uh, why do you think? We all know he's very serviceable. Yeah, it, that, that was just weird. Like, even like, all right, have him as a backup. But I, like, I don't know, maybe it was, it's maybe it was something else. And if it is something else, then I guess we'll find out in the future. But to just outright cut him, I know they did say they tried to trade him. But, I mean, I, I thought that, like, worst case scenario for Tyree Phillips, he's going to be a backup. He's going to be a depth guy. And he's somebody that has started before. So you, you like to have guys with starting experience on the team at offensive, well, really at any position, but certainly at offensive line. But I, I guess I, I don't know, man. He said him and Patrick hold more value than anybody on the offensive line. I know it's a stretch, but with them two, it's plug and play. You can't find that anywhere. Uh, now, I know it isn't always pretty for sure, but he gets the job done. Oh, yeah, it ain't, it ain't always pretty with Tyree Phillips. But. And I think a lot of it had to do with him moving. Because it's like, all right, what is he? He's a tackle. Nope, he's a guard. Nope, he's a tackle. Nope, he's a guard. Nope, he's a tackle. Nope, he's a guard. So it's like there was a lack of consistency there, too. He said, um, if they couldn't trade him, they definitely aren't going to be able to get a trade for Powers. So I'm just confused. Yeah, Power, hey, Powers is here. I y'all know I thought that Powers was gone. I thought he was gone, but nope. <laughs> he better be real deal for Ravens, boy. It's sorry for the long one, but the Lamar theory has been on my mind for months now. Not gonna lie. And like we all are soon, as soon as we see another quarterback reset the market while EDC sits on his hands, I'm out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Right and